Hi all, welcome to Salesforce in 5 minutes. In this video, I am going to answer all the questions that I have raised in the recent short. But before getting started, if you like my videos, please subscribe to this channel. So according to the interview, the first question was, what are the some considerations that should be taken care while writing a record type? So the answer to this question is very simple that we have to take care of the previous record or the existing record. So let's say I have few existing record and I create a record type after that. What is going to happen to this existing record? Let's understand it with a real time example. So today's date is 5th of November 2023. So on 1st of July 2023, you created a record with rating equals to hot. Right? You have created a record with rating equals to hot and on 1st of November 2023 you have written a validation rule that if rating is hot fire error right now as I have not made any update to this to, to this uh, record that I've created on the first July it won't fire an error it should fire an error but it won't because the, this is an existing record now <coughs> on 5th of November 2023 you have created a record type on the same object right if you have created the record type, you have created a record type for, as per as the business processes. Okay. So usually what happens is when you create a record type, you also populate the value of this record type. Either it gets automatically populated or you have to manually populate the record type value in your records because it's as per as the business processes and it should apply on the existing records as well. So what you're going to do is basically we go and create a record type. Also, if the value is not populated inside the record type, just for the safe side, we run a script so that each record is populated with the record type. Now, as you're going to run the script, what's going to happen is the record type will also get populated in this particular record that was created on 1st of July, 2023. And the value in this record that rating equals to hot will meet the validation rule and that will fire an error message. So you should always take care or you should always consider the existing record before creating a record type or even the validation rule. Let's move on to the next question. According to the next question, how can you store all the errors without setting up the debug log? So let's say my user does not have any kind of debug log. Okay. All I'm doing is I am writing an error. Uh, like for an example, I have written a class and there might be errors into this class. So to handle these errors, what we do is try catch block, right? In try catch block, I will be able to uh, see whatever, uh, whatever the errors are, right? But I will be only able to see that those errors at that instant as the debug log is not set. I will be able to see in, inside the like for an example, I'll just take it to the developer console. So if I run this Apex task, if there is any kind of error, I will be able to see inside the logs. No problem with that. But if debug log is not set, I won't be able to again get back this log. If someone clears this log, I won't be able to get it. So how can we store this debug log? I have to store this debug log somewhere, right? If my even if my debug mode is not set for that particular user, how can I store these errors? How can I store this error? Now the answer to this question is very simple. What you can do is you can create a custom object with particular fields like error description. Right. Uh, uh, let's say custom object name is uh, store errors, something like that. Right. And we'll create fields with named as field descript error description, error type, class name, method name. Right. And uh, and uh, uh, error uh, like which error uh, did the user get? Right. Uh, which error? Uh, error or we can say username something like that we can say set up the username who has got this error and the field description error type whatever the class name is why i have got the error and method name and what i can do is i can write a try catch block inside my apex class right i can write a try catch block and inside the catch inside the catch whenever there is an error we will basically go inside the catch right if there is any if there is no error then we will go inside the try but let's say if there is certain kind of error we are going to go inside the catch and inside this catch rather than just printing the name what i can do is i can store whatever the error is within this custom object so at 
certainly a like after certain time also i can i will be able to go to this store error object and i will be able to see this whatever errors that i have got whoever has got and at what time he has got and which method he has got which class he has got and the error type and everything we can see over this object so this is how you can store the error and without setting up the debug logs let's move on to the next question the third question is how can you insert the record of custom metadata using apex right how can you uh, can you insert the record uh, of custom metadata using apex the answer is no you cannot uh, if you are if you have ever written a test class and let's say you are trying to create a record of a custom metadata using test class you won't be able to salesforce will throw you an error basically saying that you won't be able to insert a record of custom metadata using apex so even if you want to pass the custom editor custom metadata of your uh, custom metadata in your test class what you can do is you can query your existing records of your inside your test class and you can pass it just to clear it up right because basically you cannot insert your own record inside the even in the test class or even in the apex or anywhere so you cannot insert the record of a custom metadata using apex let's move on to the next question sometimes we can't see the update on page layout immediately and how to fix it so what do i mean by this question is let's say i'm on account object right i'm on this please subscribe account object let's say i went to the page layout and i've added a new field over here now if you can see i have to either log in and log out to get this basically the field won't be visible immediately if i reload this page sometimes the field is not visible to us immediately right even if you uh, reload it again and again you still won't be able to see it all you have to do is you have to log it log in and log out to see the page again so to see the field that is available on the page layout again so that is the problem now the answer the, the reason of this problem is because of the cache so what happens is salesforce will store the data in the form of cache and because you are reloading it what happens is again it will pull the details from the cache and it will show you on the screen right as it is going to show it on the screen you are not seeing the newly added field even if you refresh it multiple times once you log in and log out a new session is created and you will be able to successfully able to see this field now the turnaround or the way to fix it easily without logging in and logging out is you can shift control shift i you can play uh, click control shift i right it will go inside the inspect mode and you can hard reload so you can go to the reload there are three options normal reload hard reload and empty cache and hard reload so you can empty the cache and hard, uh, do a hard reload so what will happen is it will clear all the cache and it will do a hard reload so you will be able to see the newly added field from the page layout in your screen so if you found this video helpful please subscribe to this channel